Over 2 million people have fled Ukraine since the start of Russia's onslaught. And the U.N. says the number of refugees could double to 4 million people forced to flee by the end of the war. The journey out of Ukraine in the middle of an escalating conflict is a difficult one that most people, even the healthy and strong ones, find very difficult to bear. My next guest has been doing incredible reporting on the ground in Ukraine, and he's also helping to escort families out of danger and into neighboring countries, including one woman undergoing cancer treatment who was asked to leave a hospital to make room for people injured in the war. I hope that this uh, transportation will help me to survive. Uh, it increases chances uh, at least twice, as doctors uh, here say. So uh, I need to try. You need to to book place for yourself and uh, to stay in a queue to wait for uh, vital treatment. Uh, it's unbearable. Joining me now is Terrell Jermaine Starr. He's a non-resident senior fellow at the Atlantic Council and host of the Black Diplomats podcast. Terrell, um, you helped Irina seek safety, and today you tweeted that you can help any foreign students needing to get to the border. How have you been helping people get out of Ukraine? I mean, how difficult is it to get out? Well, as long as you're not in a... Thank you for having me on the show again. It's, it's always a pleasure. Uh, now, as long as you're not in a conflict zone or an area where um, where Ukrainians um, um, basically are fighting to liberate the city, uh, you can get out so long as you have transportation from your location, be it through government-sanctioned trains to the nearest uh, border town, or if you're doing what I am doing is helping people to find transport where I'm literally in the car with them getting from point A to point B, point B being the border area. Uh, what makes that challenging is that you need to, one, know that there's going to be an aid organization on the other side of the border, be it Poland, Romania, Hungary, Slovakia, uh, to, to, to receive you. And you also need to brace for a day or two of travel make sure that you have your right context and make sure that somebody will be able to receive you um, once you, you know, uh, um, during that journey, because it's not about money or, or finances. This is about having a network of people who you trust. And I've found these people through my, um, my own personal networks on Twitter. And uh, that's been very helpful. Also having money to keep maintain gas, one gas, one, one tank of gas will usually take you um, on the journeys that I've gone, but now it takes about four tanks, uh, making sure that you have the right food to get there, but making sure logistically that you have everything lined up because everything is so unpredictable right now that you really need to have people on your um, in your roller decks willing to help you because you can't do you can't make a, a cross trip across the country journey on your own. In terms of the situation on the ground, I mean, how is it escalating from your perspective? Well, it's only escalating because uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin is essentially losing this war. And so he's basically bombing people to death because if it were up to an, you know, a conventional army to conventional army, the Russians are losing in that regard. And so you see more civilian targets being hit, but whether it be um, residential buildings, whether that is hospitals or any other civilian site i actually have reported for msnbc from sites where um where where, where russians where russians have hit uh civilian locations and so that's a primary escalation and again that's happening because putin with his um second largest most powerful military on the world has a very poorly planned uh invasion and the Ukrainians are exploiting that. And the only way that Putin knows how to respond is by hitting civilian targets that have nothing to do with the war, with the military offensive. In terms of whether or not you think he's doing it intentionally, I mean, you're on the ground, right? So you're able to actually see, at least in some of these cases, um, the civilians walking around and, and, and what these targets actually look like before. Um, 
Do you think he's doing it on purpose, intentionally targeting civilians um, with these attacks? Yes. Yes. In fact, if you go on um, Russian speaking telegram or Ukrainian telegram channels, you will see soldiers who were captured and they will tell you directly that they were given orders to shoot civilians. Now, some people would say that these soldiers are being told to say this under duress. I don't think that is true. And so if you go to Russian language telegram, um, I think that's a lot where, where a lot of access to the West is being cut off through language. But if you go to those sources, you will see Russian soldiers essentially confirming that they've been told to hit Russian, uh, to, to hit civilian targets. So I, I think that we can verify that as a fact, at least through those um, telegram channels that are um, run by Ukrainian journalists and analysts um, um, featuring soldiers who have been caught. Now, he definitely has done this in the past. When you look at Syria, when you look at Chechnya and the second, um, the second was Chechen war. And so hitting civilian targets has been consistent with how the Russian army operates, particularly if they're losing. So we can, you know, at, at any rate, I don't think that Russia will outright admit to any of this. You pretty much just have to look at what's clearly seen as a, a you know, a, a, as direct hits, because from what I have seen and from what my colleagues have seen on the ground, it's clear that he is hitting targets that are well beyond conflict areas or, conf or, or, or battle conflicts. Terrell Jermaine Starr, thank you so much from your very important perspective on the ground in Ukraine. Please stay safe and keep us updated um, as you uh, try to consistently help people get out of Ukraine. Thank you again. That is it for me tonight. I'm Zerlina. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube. The Mehdi Hassan Show is coming up after a short break right here on The Choice from MSNBC.